thing we asked you is, uh, you would be willing to help donate some items for the uh, youth on Wednesday night. Uh, Polly was asking for 35 Bibles, which I think would have been in range of about $500. Over $800 came here. And we are now purchasing more Bibles. And uh, Elaine, uh, sweet, she goes, well, I want some in my class too. So guess what? She's going to get some, and uh, and I know some of you requested some, so we're going to be giving those to you as soon as they get here. But you think about eight hundred dollars came in just for one standing up, and I know it's the beauty of my life that caused that to happen. But uh, eight hundred dollars, I just I commend you. To All right, I got a story to tell you before we get to the worship service today. Jet's up at actually at Mount Zion today preaching the sermon, so the youth are going to be doing our worship for us today. What we're going to do is we're going to have the worship section first, all of it, all at one time, and because we're, they're going to be singing the song for this, sing on Wednesday evening, then the kids can go downstairs afterwards. So if you're sitting here going, what's going on, we change the worship service a little bit for them. But some people ask about David, so I'm going to share this story with you. We asked David for the funniest story of basic training, and he sent a letter yesterday, and this is what he wrote. He said, Dad, he says, uh, we had one in my platoon that burnt his foot with an MRE. An MRE is a meal ready to eat, if you, if, for you older people, it's the old sea rations. But there's a, this, they give you a pouch with the water in it, you put a stick in it, and a chemical reaction starts to where the water gets really hot. And then what happens is you put your food in a pouch in there and it cooks it. All right, got it? So the kid, uh, burned his foot on an MRE. Well, then they called for formation. And we had to have all of our camis on and our backpacks and everything else on. And he said, we all went out there and that kid came out wearing flip-flops instead of boots. And he said, the drill sergeant looked at him and said, in my three years being a drill sergeant, I never once have seen anyone have the courage to come out and stand in front of me wearing flip-flops. Then he said, he says, then I think you can only imagine what happens to him next. <laughs> so, uh, so you, you were asking how he's doing, I said, that's the story I was going to share with you today. Uh, about we did get a phone call from him, and we're just, for example, three minutes, and that was it. But, you know, he's alive. All right, so what I want to do right now is let's stand up and greet one another as the, uh, you come up, and it's a little kid, it's okay. Yeah. Look at if any of our Wednesday night, Peyton, or anyone else wants to come up here, guess what I brought up? And so you guys can help out if you want to. So let's greet one another first, and then the little kids, if you want to come up and help, you are more than welcome to come and help.
three to four of them up here having a good time. You know, God wants us to worship, right? And worship can be fun. Do you agree with that? Yep. Yes. Why not? I mean, I'm gonna, we're going to be in heaven. We're going to be worshiping for a long time. And if we're not having fun up there, what a boring time it's going to be. God wants us to worship, and worship can be fun. And yes, even a little sweaty. <laughs> Like I said, those, these kids are just, uh, especially on Wednesday night, and we saw a little bit today, they're just, just inspiring, aren't they? Aren't they? Yes, yes. yes they are. So our elder is going to come forward, and we're going to, uh, he's going to read the scripture passage, and then we're going to be taking up the offering and with our announcements. So come on, come on up, Adam. That a great worship service. Yes. Um, we're gonna release the kids to children's church. That someone has already not very many. I'm gonna give a reminder for everyone to fill out their communications cards for the that are in the bulletin and put them in the collection here a little bit. Isn't it great to be in the house of God? Amen. Amen. Hey, that was great. That was a great worship service. Thank you for the kids for the great music. Today's scripture reading comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter one, verses eight. It says, "Be, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth." Several words, prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us together today to worship you today. We pray that you tell us with your Holy Spirit so we may learn your word and apply it in our daily lives. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. We'll now have the ushers come up and we have our offering and our announcements.
communication tables are two sign-up sheets. One of them is for the Wednesday night uh, meal. Uh, we only have two slots left. And I think that's great. Only two slots left and at the end of November. So if anyone's interested in that. And then also we are preparing ourselves for the 40 days of prayer, which will be starting in about a week or a week and a half. And uh, so we want you to sign up, sign up for time. We'd love to have people uh, praying, somebody praying 20, at least one person praying every minute of every day. You know what I mean. Uh, but, you know, if you say, well, somebody's already signed up on the slot that I want to pray, I hate to sign up anywhere. Well, anyway, uh, the more the merrier. So let's just uh, be involved in praying. Uh, as we're watching what's happening in the world, especially this last week, boy, there's a great need of prayer. Uh, great need of prayer. And so let's, uh, let's unite as a church and let's be prayer. All right. You know what? Didn't the, didn't the little kids do a wonderful job? Yeah. yeah. Didn't the youth do a wonderful job? Yeah. He's working in this church, and he's working in a magnificent way. Amen. And uh, it's just amazing. When Polly stands up and asks, we, we can do some Bibles for the children's uh, ministry, and uh, we got enough for them. Well, how many was that? 50? 45? 50-something? Came in. Enough for You were shooting for... I think $500 and 800 came in. <laughs> That's great. That is wonderful. Because then, as I said, then we got Elaine Sweet over here. She's going, well, we want someone in our class too. Okay, no problem. And so we're going to be passing uh, out some Bibles. And uh, we're actually going to be going to the church and looking at the Bibles we have. Yeah, some are pretty worn. And so it's probably time to, to look at those too. So they're on order. When they get here, I don't know. Uh, we went an off company that I'm not familiar with, so we'll see how long it takes for it to get up there. But um, I think that's just great. God is God is working, isn't he? God is working. I'm just going to, hey, anything you guys want to share what God is doing in your life? I mean, we, we have a, uh, I, I got a, a note from the, uh, the, the, the shades of that uh, guy is doing fairly good. He might be coming home uh, from uh, Birchhaven to home soon, probably this week, so we know that. Um, I know we had a uh, prayer for a man, um, um, uh, Carol uh, Connie Bagans. I'm sorry, I was going to say Carol Bennett. Uh, Connie Bagans' uh, brother-in-law was dying, and they were just asked us to come and to pray for him that he would stay alive as long as his son from North Carolina could come up and spoke to God. Uh, within a few hours, and uh, the son was able to come up from North Carolina. See, God gives special grace from time to time. Stuff like that. Yeah. Anything you want to share, real quickly? I don't share. Sure. Okay. I'll be certain. That's what I was going to say. Now, excuse me, I cry when I'm happy, and I cry when I'm sad, so I cry a lot. Anyway, um, Scarlett did great. Um, she had a big birth month. And the doctor said it needed to come off because it would turn the lane. When they got in there, they asked Emily to come back and look at it because they couldn't find it because it had faded so much. So they, it was kind of neat. They lifted up her hair, shaved the area, repaired it, and then put her hair back and you can't even see anything. Oh, well. And she had a place on her leg that they moved. He said he thought everything was going to be fine. And she was acting normal yesterday. Tried to speak the dogs and get in. Good. Maybe that is good. One more person. One more. <coughs> one more. I should have said one more. Go ahead. My prayers were because we're back in Macomb School. A lot of you know we had a couple of that, so we've been back there for schedule. I got news this week that the Van Loo School is they're working on a schedule for me. So before long, praise the Lord. We'll Okay. And with that, for those of you who don't know, uh, she's part of the Hancock Christian Education. I said that wrong, but uh, where they go into the schools, the county schools, uh, and she goes in and, and teaches um, uh, Bible stories and things like that. And there's been some issues in the last year, but it looks like it's getting worked out. So that's great. That's great. God is good, and we're thankful.
all the time. We've been uh, doing a series of sermons and um, on the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue to talk about that for a little while here because the Spirit of God, the part of God that is working in us right now is the Holy Spirit. That's why we talk about Him. This, before we do that, let's do our memory verse. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. What's our purpose? Okay, loving God is bringing people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Transforming lives, that's what we're talking about. That's what the Holy Spirit does. When you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit uh, indwells you and starts to transform you into the image of Christ. As we said last week, Acts chapter 6, remember, Stephen, his face shone like that of, anybody remember? <coughs> An angel. And the question is, or the statement is, when we are filled with God's Spirit, we will display God. People will see this. They'll just, will just ooze with God. And churches, even church bodies are the same way. Um, there are church bodies that just ooze of God, ooze of the Holy Spirit. And when people come in, they say, there's the face of God. You know, and because that's, we are to reflect God's glory to those around. Serving the Lord is what happens as a result of that. When we are transformed, we want to serve the Lord. We want to do things for Him. We want to share the good news of Jesus Christ with other people. We get excited about that. And so, and so that's, the, that's the next step that we have. So, with that in mind, I want to go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, which was already read, and it says, And you will receive power. And that word power, by the way, it comes from the Greek word dunamon, which is the basic word for the word dynamite. So, when he says... When Jesus says you will receive power, he's saying you're going to receive dynamite. You're the power of dynamite. Kaboom! We're going to make an impact in, in the area that we are out. So, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will to be what? My witnesses. So when we are his, when we receive that power, the purpose is, is to give honor and glory to God and to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and where? The ends of the earth. Where are we at? This is the ends of the earth. Not just a little area around Jerusalem, but everywhere. We're supposed to be giving the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone. So who is this Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit actually do? What is his purpose in the church? He says he sends like a dove and God baptizes in the fire. was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. This word that's translated as Spirit in the Old Testament is the word Ruach. Very literally it means a wind or a breath. But not a normal breath. It means a violent exhalation, a blast of breath. The Holy Spirit comes with power. New Testament, the Greek word that's translated as spirit is the word pneuma. It means a wind, a current of air, a blast of breath. In the Old Testament times, the Spirit of God would actually descend upon people and then it would often depart. You can read very clearly that the Spirit of God was with Saul and then would leave Saul. 
The same with David. When David sinned against God with Bathsheba, he cried out to God, please, don't take your spirit from me. In the New Testament, though, once Jesus left, He sent us His Holy Spirit. And for those who are believers in Christ, the Holy Spirit will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. In the New Testament, you can see the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus in the form of the dove. You can see the Holy Spirit falling on the people of God at Pentecost, empowering them to speak in other tongues and do all sorts of miraculous works. You see the Holy Spirit empowering people with spiritual gifts to live a supernatural life in a very natural world. And you see the Holy Spirit giving people the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So many people live a spiritless life when God wants you to live a Spirit-filled and Spirit-powered life. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what's the importance of the Holy Spirit? If you go through scriptures, you will see that you have this group of, of, of followers of Jesus that were called disciples. And, and if you look at them throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were essentially wimps. If you look at them after uh, the day of Pentecost, they became warriors. What is the difference in them? What, is, what happened to them? And the answer is, is they became filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me, let, me, let me go through this list for you. The disciples were powerless and self-oriented before the Holy Spirit came upon them. Luke chapter 9, the disciples tried to heal a demoniac were not able to. Mark chapter 10, the disciples were chastised by Jesus for denying the little children from coming unto him. Mark chapter 14, the disciples were chastised by Jesus for condemning a woman for anointing Jesus. At Mark chapter 14, the disciples slept when Jesus asked them to stay with them, with him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mark chapter 15, the disciples deserted Jesus at the cross. Mark chapter 10, James and John's mother, uh, James and John's known as the sons of Zebedee, or even the sons of Thunder, Thunder because it was thought that they were turbulent and stormy individuals. We don't know anybody that way, do we? Okay. Anyway. Uh, Mrs. Zebedee came up to uh, Jesus and says, When you get into your kingdom, can my son sit at your right hand and your left hand? The word guy came back to the disciples and they became very angry because of that, because of jealousy that was coming out. Peter, the disciple known for foot and mouth disease, when Jesus indicated that he would die on the cross, G uh, Peter said it would not, and then that little conversation went back and forth. And Jesus said, Peter, you will deny me at least three times. Then, uh, of course, Peter said it would not happen when Jesus was, uh, was arrested. Uh, Peter was walking, and a little girl came up to her and said, Surely you are the one who know them, for your speech makes you known. Peter denied it, and the Bible says. Then he began to curse and to swear, I do not know him. <clears throat> then the rooster crowed. After the Holy Spirit, we have Peter then, in the area that he was hiding from, now stood in the area and proclaimed who Jesus Christ was. Stephen in Acts chapter 7 says that he was filled with the Spirit of God, and he looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God the Father. Look, he said, I see the heaven open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And he covered up, they covered up their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, because they were ready to stone Stephen at that time. They drug him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, um, the witness laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul, who became Paul. If you don't think people are watching us, they are. Verse 59, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord, receive my spirit. Verse 16, then he fell at his knees and cried out, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. How can you forgive somebody who's stoning you? You're filled with the Spirit. You do what Jesus did. And then he said this and he fell asleep. I find it very interesting that the Bible doesn't call death death unless it's referring to spiritual 
When a Christian dies, it says, and he fell asleep. Acts chapter 11, Barnabas, he was a good man, full of the spirit and faith. Paul, Acts chapter 13, Paul, also known as Saul at the time, was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I just lost another one. But anyway, here's these individuals. What changed them? What changed them from wimps to warriors? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So much so that they were able to die with dignity for the cause of Christ. Peter was believed to have been beheaded or crucified upside down. Matthew was arrested in Ethiopia, where, where he was nailed to the ground with short spears and beheaded. John was forced to be martyred on Patmos. Bartholomew was also known as Nathaniel, a missionary to Asia, he, uh, present day Turkey. Uh, he was uh, flogged to death by a whip. Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross known as the Andrew cross. You ever seen the cross that looks like X's? That's what they're referring to. Thomas was stabbed with a spear in India during one of his missionary trips. Matthias, the one who took over for Judas Iscariot, was stoned and beheaded. Paul was tortured and beheaded uh, by uh, Nero, the emperor. James uh, was beheaded by King Herod. Philip was crucified. James, the less, was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple of Jerusalem uh, and dispatched with a club where he fell. Or they thought he was crucified or stoned. Simon was crucified. And Jude was cruelly put to death by the Magi of Persia. How are these individuals who at one point ran from Christ able to stand up for Christ? It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I've come to the point where I turn the news off. I just get so tired of it. But what's going on in the world today? What's going on? Christians, hear me. Are we concerned? Are we afraid? Are we running? Or are we able to stand up and say, this Jesus talked about this thousands of years ago. And have the confidence that comes from the power of the Spirit. Okay, let's go back to my illustration from last week. As you remember, this is our life. This is our life without Christ. It is empty and it is void. When we become a Christian, we, our lives then become filled with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God at this point now indwells our life. The problem is, is that, uh, is that we have another nature that's in war within us called the sin nature, or I want to call it the me nature, and what happens many times is we don't want to give up me. So we start pushing God out of our lives and the Holy Spirit out of our lives. Okay? So the question now raises is, is this base filled with water? And the answer is no. Just as a Christian life, when we put our, ourselves in it, me, myself, my way, my life, we are essentially pushing God out of our lives. And there are those who live a defeated Christian life, and the reason why they live a defeated Christian life is because me is still in control. I'm in control of my family. Don't tell me how to be the husband. Don't tell me how to be the wife. Don't tell me how to, uh, what to do with my money. Don't tell me what to do with my time. Don't tell me it's my life, and I can do with my life whatever I want to do with my life. You ever hear a Christian say that? And then you look at him and, oh, the other says, oh, I mean, the groaning Christian, praise God, I am thankful today. The reason why they have no joy is because God is not in control. <coughs> but this is what happens. If you, we've been praying for you to be filled with the Spirit. Really, the prayer should not be, Lord, fill me with your Spirit, because you have the Holy Spirit. The prayer should be, Lord, help me to yield myself more to you. Because as you yield more and more of your life, you take you out of there and you give more room for God. So, you say, Lord, I am going to give you my wife. And I am going to treat my wife as Christ treated the church. Lord, I'm going to raise my children in a way that is honoring to you. Lord, while I am at work, May I clean up my speech and so I can honor you. Lord, while I'm on the computer, may everything that I say bring glory and honor to you. 
Lord, my Sunday mornings, boy, I would love to have them to myself, but this is the day that's set aside for you, so I'm going to give you my Sunday mornings. Lord, better yet, not just my Sunday mornings, but every day of my life. Lord, the Bible says I'm supposed to forgive, and that's one of the hardest things, because you know, they hurt me bad and deeply. But yet I'm going to show my, your grace to them, and I'm going to forgive them. Lord, it's awfully nice to gossip, but I'm not going to gossip because I know that doesn't bring honor and glory to you. Lord, and we go on and on and on until the point that we are overflowing with the Spirit of God. It is that constant yielding. Once again, one of the reasons why we struggle with Greek sermons on the Holy Spirit is because of all the different theologies that are out there. Some people say that there's a second work of grace that's called sanctification. Where you come to this Christ's point in your faith, where you, you finally yield down and say, like, God, you have 100% of me. Some people say that this is a, a process that we go through. Some people say that you're filled totally with the Holy Spirit at, at a point of, 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 of becoming a Christian. What do I think? Yes? <laughs> yeah. I like that. It's not like a politician, don't I? Yeah. I think God brings some people to that crisis point in their faith and He has to bring them to their knees before they start looking up. I also believe that there are those who at the point of salvation, they, they grasp it and they get it and they, they are going 100% for it. And I've seen that. I, I also think that some of us, like maybe someone like me, who grew up in the church, that it, <clears throat> That sometimes it's a struggle when you've grown up in the church because you've always been here. That God keeps chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and says, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. And it's a battle that we go through. That's why I say, I think, I think God works with everyone differently in those areas. But I do know that the heart has to be here where you're saying, I want more of you, God. I, God, you have all of me. And I'm going to tell you the times that I have gotten in trouble in my life, the times I've gotten in trouble in my ministry, and even in my personal life, is when I say, I have my will, my right, and my way. And then I start pushing God out. <coughs> we are to reflect Christ to others. Um, pastor, and all of us listen, forgot the towel. <coughs> so Willie is going to get touched with the blue water. He promises us power. Not to the church leadership. Not to those who are on television. He promises power to all Christians. Dunamis, or dunamis, dunamis, dynamite, confidence, and firm affirmation, perseverance, undaunted by threat, enablement. 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 Meaning, give us power or give us the ability to. Romans chapter 12 says, Therefore, brothers, I urge you, I, 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 therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing. <coughs> Not your Sunday mornings, all of you. Your bodies, every part of you. May that be honored and be glorified to God. This is your true worship and your proper worship. And he says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Be conform to the pattern of this world that becomes about me. Because that's what this world is all about, is me. What a high school song. <laughs> My 30th high school reunion was yesterday. And I didn't go. <laughs> I had no desire. None at all. You know, you go to high school, it's about me. It's about me and conforming to the world. I, I love it when the teenagers, you know, get to me, stand up here and I'm just trying to be an individual. You ever hear that? I'm just trying to find myself and I want to be an individual. You hear that all the time, don't you? What do they do? They dress just like this person. Why? Long to the pattern of this world. We want to be like. You want to be accepted. He goes to the factory and he use the language of the factory because you want to be liked. You want to be accepted. So there's nothing wrong. If you all want to dress like Mr. Gordon's hunk.
jump up here, that's fine. This man has been out of high school for 30 years. Wow. That's fine. But this way it says, it's be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation. You have two choices as a Christian. You can conform or you can be transformed. Which do you want? I'm going to tell you the easy road is conformity. The hard road is transformation. The best road is transformation. Because when we're being transformed, guess what's happened? We are starting to display Christ. And as Stephen in Acts chapter 6 he saw his face was like that of a man. Don't you want to hear that? Each one of my kids are an angel face. Right? Each my I got the best looking kids in the whole world, right? Right? Tony <laughs> Right? Come on, parents. Where you at? I'm, I'm picking a fight with you right now. Because you've seen these babies, and when they're born, to be honest with you, the only thing they're, they're lovable to is mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I got something out of you. Now I don't know where I was going. <laughs> die and they close the lid to your casket and someone stands up and says Pastor Duncan had the face of an angel because he oozed God does. and that happens when you transform not conform the easiest road is conformity the hardest road is transformation when we yield more to the Holy Spirit the more the Spirit is in control and the more we are filled so what part of my life do I not want to give to the Holy Spirit? My addictions? My money? My sin? My spouse? My children? My job? My free time? The sovereignty over my life? My anger? My hurt? My unforgiveness? What part? I think, you know, Bob's well, last two I, I specifically put at the end because how many of us have never been hurt? All right, now let's be honest. How many of us have been hurt Deeply. Okay. You guys are honest over here. There's no one honest over here. So I'll talk to you guys. Seriously. We've all been hurt deeply. And we've all had the devil in our ear going, you have a right not to forgive. Don't forgive. That's what the world says. That's conformity. Transformation says I will forgive. We'll talk about it. But hurt and unforgiveness. When you give that to the Lord, the weight of that is taken away. Now, why do we need the Spirit? Because we cannot be transformed on our own. We need the help. We need the help of God in our lives. And let me explain it this way. Imagine if you were a piano player, like me. Okay? All I know how to play is chopsticks. Okay, Joetta is a piano teacher. How much do you love chopsticks? That answers my question. <laughs> I've seen piano teachers go, I don't ever want to hear that song ever again. But imagine if all I knew how to play was chopsticks or twinkle, twinkle, little star. And I come up here and I start playing this beautiful piano up here with, with that, those songs. Okay? And I'm saying to myself, I don't know how to play. I'm not a good player, but yet I'm going to play anyway. What happens is, is the Holy Spirit comes upon us and takes what's mediocre and fills us with dynamite and puts the power in it. You following what I'm saying? God has given every one of us abilities and desires and whatnot. When we give us to the Lord and say, Lord, this is yours, we might think it's like playing twinkle, twinkle, little star, but the Holy Spirit's the one that comes and takes over and empowers it and makes it better. Like this. Little. I thought he was with you. No. Jack. Tommy? 
thank you, we praise you, God. Jesus, we pray. Who wants more of God? Who want more of God? Who wants more of God? More. Right? Yes. I want everybody to stand up at this time. And I want you to turn around, I want you to give somebody a high five and say, I am so glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning. <laughs>